Before you begin to think the world is awash with noisy, nosy trolls like Hoyt. If you allow somebody to make a comment and there is not a response, then it can become a truth. Welcome to part two, where we introduce you to a girl brave enough to take on the trolls where they live. I'm just not so certain I see myself wearing a spandex suit and a cape. Hi, my name is Rosie Reed but online, I'm a physics girl. A physics girl, I, I would say, compared to, to Rosie, a physics girl is a, a little bit more calm and a little bit more logical. I'm a physicist, and more specifically, I'm a postdoc at Yale University, and uh, right now I actually do research at the Large Hadron Collider. So I started posting as physics girl as a, as a graduate student. I did debate about whether I should change my ID when I got my PhD as Dr. Physics Girl or something. Because uh, also I have a PhD in nuclear physics and a black belt in judo. Physics girl. I met her in the Slate comment boards responding to one of my stories. She wields facts with style under pressure. I love to argue, actually. Um, I see my role as really to try and explain what scientists mean and what they do. These people who believe that scientists are conformists don't actually know any scientists. As I got deeper into science, I realized how truly little most people know about science, the scientific process. Doc? We don't like wear lab coats and run around all the time. Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, here at Muppet Labs, where the future is being made today. If somebody knows the information and like has a disagreement, I'm much more comfortable with that than like they're making a decision because, well, CO2 isn't really a large percentage of the atmosphere. An internet native since the days of dial-up, Rosie is into commenting for the thrill of it, but she has to keep her behavior in check. Uh, I try not to actually spend more than 15 or 20 minutes in one go. I'll pick um, a post where I think somebody's saying things that are manifestly untrue, and usually I try to respond to each point that they've made and, and show you know, the many varied ways in which they're wrong. <laughs> this is this guy here, P, P. Mason, has made like a particular thing you see a lot. And this is this idea that over the last 16 years, there hasn't been any warming. Usually they make wrong assumption after wrong assumption after wrong assumption. And they said, okay, the average temperature is not lower now. And so this guy actually even more than claiming the 16 year, you know, flattening said it was lower. You know, I don't think that the people who comment on these, even the people I, I vehemently disagree with, are stupid. Rosie says the internet is partly responsible for making everyone feel like a climate change expert. It's sort of funny because as the science has become more and more certain, I feel like there's more and more people who are just like, I don't believe that. But I don't think it's uphill. I mean, unfortunately, the reason I don't think it is uphill is that inevitably the, the results are going to be just so obvious. Absolute belief in anything is dangerous, whether religion or climate science, and the danger in that is intensified when paraded is either. Now, I found this comment particularly amusing because he says absolute belief in anything is dangerous. I absolutely believe climate change is not happening, is basically what he came from. So what happens when we introduce physics girl to Hoyt Connell. You're assuming something that's, that may or may not be true, and you're not asking for proof. I'm not against research. I'm okay with research. Find out next in part three, where we take the debate out of the message boards and the Twitter feeds into an actual dialogue. <laughs>